I guess we are live. Are okay. we? Yes, I think we are live right now. Welcome everyone. I see a good crowd here. Almost 30 people joined so far. I know there are some companies who just sent one representative and since this is being recorded, they are going to be shared within their organizations. So welcome everyone. Uh, we appreciate your time here. We are very pleased to be here. You know me and Ahmet very well. Uh, I'm the pre-sales director and Ahmet is our sales director for the APAC MENA region. Hi, Ahmet. Hi, Anna. How are you? Good, thank you. So today's topic is conversational AI. And without further ado, uh, I'll just leave the stage for you, Ahmet. Is that okay? Yes, Anna, thanks a lot. Let me uh, make a quick start. Welcome, everyone. Such a pleasure to be giving this uh, webinar. So I see a good crowd, as Anna said, so it's really exciting to me. Um, I, I will have 15 minutes, so I want to go directly into the subject without, uh, uh, you know, spending too much time on the details uh, because I don't have that luxury in this webinar. So the purpose of this webinar, guys, just to uh, just to transfer my experience with you regarding the sales of conversational AI solutions. So we are doing a quite good job this year as well as the last years, and we see an increasing trend towards interest in these tools. And uh, it might sound a little bit too out of scope for this webinar, but I'd like to give you uh, a sociological fact or economic fact about what's going on in this world today. Uh, as you know, the Industrial Revolution started a couple of hundreds of years ago, and we were talking about steaming engines and, uh, you know, like weaving machines. And honestly, nowadays we are going through a transformation in the customer services area as well. So people started talking about automation and one of the top technology trends, if you go and check Gartner report for top technology trends, you will see at the top a concept called hyper automation. And it's basically, um, the motto is very clear. It says whatever can be, auto can be automated will be automated. So it's an inescapable trend. Uh, you're based on your territories or based on your industries that you focus on. Uh, this trend might strike you sooner or later, but it's coming. It's coming as a big storm. Uh, of course, there are a lot of implications of this, sociological, economic, so political even. But our focus is obviously uh, implementing this, right? So uh, we already believe that we can bring value to our customers by automating some of the mundane tasks. But honestly, when I say mundane, following some of the common terminology in the market, I hesitate saying that because we already started automating like complicated services as well. Uh, but uh, honestly, uh, when, when we present it uh, at the entry level to our customers, we use that term because it's easy to communicate. So we say, okay, we need, we always need experts in your contact center, but we need them for, for the actual complicated things uh, that they fit into. Otherwise for mundane things, for repetitive tasks, you should be going for automation because this is the big trend. And obviously the efficiency, the flexibility, the consistency, all of these are big advantages of the automation. So um, I wanna start with this one because there, there are two keywords here, which I think can be useful for you as well. So nowadays, when you start a discussion with your customers, everyone will speak about machine learning and AI, right? So what, what they do not re really realize, what the customers most, mostly do not realize is 50% of the story is about AI. The remaining 50% is about consultancy. And we use the word consultancy, we can say professional services or design, or like we call it high-touch consultancy. And what we mean by that, you have so many components, but how you bring them together and how you deliver a customer experience is a really uh, a different art. It's not about just having the technology, it's also about having the know-how, especially of design. And within that concept, you should also think about localization, customization, understanding the requirements of the customer, delivering the right design. These are really, really important. So if you wanna be a good salesperson and if you wanna be convincing, uh, what works for me most of the cases is I try to give trust to the customers about, of course, they will come and ask you, who have you implemented? Where have you implemented this, right? And the, the, the key reason behind that question is they wanna test whether you really know how to deliver these type of solutions. But of course, I mean, even if you haven't delivered that as a partner, uh, you can simply say our vendor has done this for the last 20 years and 
you know, we are working very closely and we are always happy to help you in your sales activities as well. But in the end, we need to give that confidence. And I also incorporate, I always incorporate that aspect of uh, selling conversation AI into my presentations. So let me just uh, quickly start. Um, one of the first things we typically do is uh, we mention a quotation from Gartner actually regarding our capability for customization. Uh, one of the reasons why we do it is like in most of the cases, besides the fact that like AI is a question, delivery is a question, people always have this prejudice against speech technology, especially if it's speech-based, by the way, does it work with my language? So this question will be one of the key questions you will, you will see all the time. And, you know, the funny thing is, even when we, okay, for example, when I sold the solution in Dubai, and then I sold it to Lebanon, and then I sold it to, you know, different countries in the region, the next country, although I know that like that accent is already represented elsewhere, so I, I'm 200% sure about that. Uh, for example, in Egypt, they say, okay, okay, I understand, it works in Egypt uh, for Arabic. Okay, now they're convinced, but does it work in Egyptian Arabic? <laughs> like, there is no escape from this. But just to close this door from the very beginning, or just, let me say, just to convince the customer on this, we start with that strong statement that, guys, we are like the tailoring your neighborhood. Like we are not like trying to impose you to certain fits. We are trying to build the best suite for you for your own size. So, so this is the core of our business model: customization, localization, calibration, uh, design. These are the things that we emphasize. And of course, uh, we, we are trying to show them some of our references, some Gartner quotations, this and that. And of course, the fact that we've been doing this for the last twenty-one years with multiple, like more than. X hundred uh, customers is also giving them this confidence. And please also use those tricks this way or that way. I can also help you with that. But this is really needed uh, to convince the market. So coming to what we offer to the market. So I, I'm sure you already have familiarity with our solutions, but I want to express to you how we present it to our own customers uh, during the process of convincing them for, for these type of deployments. So we address uh, the problems of companies in three stages. On the service stage, we are helping them increase their level of automation and therefore efficiency. But we are, I'm also sometimes using a twist there. I'm saying, okay, we are helping you for uh, increased automation as well as humanization of your technology. So this is like, you know, the, the, they start to think, what, what, does, what does he mean? Because when you say automation, the standard positioning of that concept in the brains of uh, your customers is like, okay, automation my customers don't like interacting with machines. So this is like an expression. When I hear that, I sometimes feel a bit like, you know, you know uh, why? Because people really forget the fact that we are already interacting with machines, guys. So for example, when, when you call an IVR, what is that? So it's, it's an old school machine and you have to wait for the right menu if, you, if you're lucky enough to find it and you get lost in that maze. So actually, the, the good thing about a speech-enabled IVR, for example, which is part of the conversation in portfolio, is you're humanizing that technology because the most personal human medium is speech, right? So I'm giving two examples. If you go to a restaurant and say, you know, and the waiter comes to you and says, for kebab, press one. For sushi, press two, right? It's like, it's not like a real human type of interaction. You simply say, I want sushi or kebab, right? Um, so uh, in that sense, we're humanizing it. But in another sense, of course, we're also getting some of the workload off from the agents and putting it onto the IVR. So we're expanding the scope of the IVRs or the live chat through chatbots or through, through virtual assistants. But I also emphasize this aspect because this is really changing the balances in their minds. So they, they started looking at it from a different perspective. Okay, I'm doing some automation here, but I'm doing it in a more humane way. So the interaction will be easier. So people will not feel very uh, you know, uh, stuck in that type of a conversation. Plus, I'm always emphasizing that, look guys, automation is just one part of the story. Whatever we're gonna build, this will be part of the whole customer journey. So, um, for example, if the customer gets stuck as for certain reason, or if the customer wants to get routed to an agent, there will always be agents there. The only thing is we will have more skilled and expert type of agents who can answer questions that the automation cannot answer. So we will still have people and they will be doing more value added type of work for you guys. But in no design, you have to, uh, you know, imprison uh, your customers to something uh, like a conversational IVR. There should always be a B option for your customers if you want to. 
But if you say no, automation is good. It's quite humanized. It's very flexible. I don't want to skip any of those like advantages through efficiency. So I want to make it the only option for the customer. But this is your decision as a customer. This is not something that we show uh, give you as a best practice. So if you can build those balances based on your estimations or predictions of the questions in the back of their mind, okay, this is automation. Will it work? Will it work with my language? Is it like going to bore my customers? The, the, will it call, uh, cause any churn or like how is the retention? So these type of questions, if I address them from the beginning, and also there's one more trick I want to tell you right now, if I have time, uh, if you address these and then they open their arms to you and then you can start feeding them, okay? So on the service stage, automation and humanization of the technology. Uh, on the verification stage, we help the customers through uh, voice-based authentication as well as some additional authentication methods. Actually, now we have a great use case. Uh, if I can have time, I will also explain you that one because all of these stages, stages started converging. This is also something that you should remember, convergence. And on the final evaluation stage, we support our customers through our analytics solutions. But the subject of this presentation is conversation AI. So let me just go straight forward to it. In the conversational AI group, which is one of the three groups that we have as part of our offerings, we have chatbots, conversational IVRs, and virtual assistants. Actually, guys, these are exactly the same things for us because these are just different channels that we serve, nothing else. And, uh, and I'm going to show you our own channel platform topology and you will and, uh, easily appreciate why these are actually the same things for us. But don't forget, our customers have a different perception. Our customers think that chatbot is a different thing, conversational AI is a different thing. So there are a lot of chatbot companies around and there will always be. But if a customer wants to have a long-term relationship, long-term transformation partners, then they need a partner which can help for all of those aspects of the question, right? So if you have something on the chatbot, it should be reusable as an NLP base for the IVR as well. So if you go with like the silo approach, this vendor for this one, this vendor for that one, we have seen multiple times that customers regret it severely. And when we show that alternative to them, inside themselves they they really feel oh wish we did, did did it from the very beginning and sometimes they replace even whatever they have of course we have different ways of penetration uh based on the customer situation because sometimes you need to really respect what is already there you know you cannot just replace something but um the, the narration if you feel that you know the customer would be much happier with an omnichannel solution the narration should go towards that direction so um one of the th couple of the things that we want to emphasize in general is, again, just to summarize, we deliver, guys. We deliver, we deliver. So this is really important. Sometimes it's painful, but it's never failed. It's never failed. So um, we deliver. Why do we deliver? Because of localization, because of close contact with the customer, because of we cannot afford not delivering. So I always say this, guys, we cannot afford as a company not delivering because you know there are there might be other companies keep on delivering but they still have a name and they still do it but we don't have this luxury so we have to deliver uh, and we do it no matter what so uh, of course sometimes some projects we are having issues here and there but we are delivering again not only high tech but high touch i already explained this the need for speed this is directly related to delivery as well as omnichannel aspect and in kpis we trust if the customer comes to you and challenge you uh, we always have KPIs that we can promise, but of course we are asking for some commitment. So if I'm going to hit that KPI, uh, then uh, we are expecting something from the customer and true omnichannel experience. Let me just go fast. Let me check my time. I think I have a couple of more minutes, but I think I gave you the gist of uh, my narration, but uh, I'm going to quickly go over my slides. Conversational AI is the generic term covering conversational IVR chatbot and virtual assistant. What is conversational IVR? You speak with the IVR. Why is it good? It is ideally personalized. Guys, please attend to this point. People spend a lot of money for personalization of the IVR, but so what? I mean, for this, press one, for this, press two. And the next time is for this, press two, for this, press one. You're changing the list, uh, the, the, the order of your menus, right? With speech, you're doing it on an ideal way. I mean, you just, because your preferences might change in time, and whatever you want to do, you're going to just directly say it and you're going to do it. So it's ideally personalized, number one. And second, this increases IVR completion rates due to the convenience you introduce 
Th three, you can automate more on the IVR because you have the alphanumeric input, you, you, you have an easy type of interface, and you decrease the hang-up rates because of the reduced average handling times. And virtual assistants. Uh, I mean, this is like typically an application which you can speak with. This is something like Siri. When you say Siri, everyone knows that. And you have a customer from uh, this is fourth largest bank, and they have a VB. So it sounds like Siri. So we're giving that example. And they have closed millions of applications during the COVID area using this application. They can handle more than 300 transactions. It's really useful, beneficial, with the same um, logic of omnichannel customer experience. And, uh, you know, the, the good old chatbots as well, part of the, uh, the same story. So this is the very high level topology. Again, uh, I always show this, although I'm the sales here, but I always feel the urge to, or like the, uh, let me say, the expect, I always feel the expectation that I should give some level of technical information to my audience because this is a bit of complicated stuff. So, and this is a new area. So people want to get some of the technical details as well. So I always reflect this and I say, look guys, the front end channels on the, on the one box, it can be anything. And these are the alternatives. And the orchestration layer handles the communication with all types of AI tools, as well as the backend systems and the live agents. And here are some of the AI components. And we can also integrate with third party AI components. And after this point, I typically show two very quick examples, two very quick demos. One, this one, let me uh, refresh this. I, I just select English. Okay. I say, for example, I start with this one. I'd like to like to learn my balance. I get this response and then I say something. My standing orders. Ahmed, Ahmed, I think you're when you're not sharing your screen. Am I the only one not seeing? I'm seeing the chat screen. Fine. Is it just me? Okay, no problem. Continue. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So as you see here, guys, I mean, when I said my standing orders, my standing orders, I get a response. So I can interact with these systems. This is just an example. So the IVR is the same thing. And I can just show you WhatsApp as well. So here, for example, I say, I need car spare parts. I need car spare parts and I get a response. And as you can see, I can interact with the system using images, voice, as well as text. So this is the omnichannel experience, and I just give a snapshot of this. Uh, if you have the pre-sales, maybe they can do further demo. But now they have a certain degree of clarity at this point, and they appreciate what the omnichannel experience is because they have seen already that it works on some web chat, it works on WhatsApp, and I'm telling that them if you want to see the exactly same demo on the IVR, it's quite uh, easy. Uh, I can just do it right now, and I can just call. But most of the cases don't know they don't require that because they understand that when you say something. The conversion is done, the NLP is there, everything is uh, brought together and the system generates a response. It can be a voice response or, as well as a text response. So this is the basic narration for this part. So I'm just going very quickly to the differentiators of the AI platform. Guys, localization and customization, the most important thing. Two, speech enablement, including voice biometrics. So this is a key point, guys. Although the subject now is the AI, as I say, maybe in the next webinar, maybe next year, I'm just going to tell you about just one platform because they're converging very fastly. Uh, so what I mean by convergence, previously voice bio was something uh, you know, like mostly people uh, considered as a standalone solution. But nowadays it's, it's almost by standard bundled with conversational IVR. Why? Now we have, let's say a new passive voice biometrics technology, which can recognize you from your ways, uh, from your voice, during your conversation with the IVR, for example, you're calling the IVR, you say, I'd like to learn my latest transactions or I'd like to learn my balance. While you're saying that, the system both understands your intention and in the meanwhile, the system uses that speech to authenticate you. So you can do both together or you can make an active uh, biometrics as well. You say, I'd like to learn my balance, my voice, my password, and the system recognizes you. So these started to be bundled and if you're talking about speech enablement, we as a vendor, we have the big advantage of, okay, we are doing full speech enablement, not only speech text and TTS, but also voice biometrics. This is also something that you can use. We can do heavy transactional automation. And when I say transactional automation, you can see, so what? But transactional means 
capable to integrate with multiple backend systems. This is very key and it's not that easy. So our experience really helps us with like REST APIs, SWI APIs. We know the backend system, we, have, we are familiarized with them and we know how to pitch them as well. We have blended AI, which combines, uh, you know, we call it man-machine collaboration. Whenever the machine fails, we can get human support and use it as a super supervised learning tool. This is one aspect. We have on-prem and cloud options. This is re really key because most of our uh, competition only has the cloud option. So especially for the financial industry, highly regulated industries, this becomes a killer big advantage, guys. So please uh, don't forget that. Omnichannel orchestrator and design know-how. So this is almost my last slide, guys. Uh, I have to finish and hand it over to Anil. Uh, maybe I can just skim the rest of my slides. I always present this slide. Why? Because I want to build that confidence in my customers. So I'm, I'm telling them, as, as I narrated in the beginning, our we have a design approach. We know how to design these stuff. And when I say design approach, there are multiple dimensions. One, design of the dialogue based on a communication strategy. What's your communication strategy? You want to personalize? You want to use different accents with different people? There are so many things under this topic. Maybe we can make a one-on-one -on -one discussion on that, but if you can give that idea to the customer, you want to be formal or informal? You want to joke? You want to be differentiating among like a, a old professional and a young a student? So these are all part of your design. Design of the backend integrations. How connective is your system? Not only just the backend system, CRM, XYZ, but also weather.com, online resources, RSS feeds, whatever, yeah, whatever is available. You can connect with them. So you can, it can make your dialogue more smart, right? Smarter. So this is about the vision about connectivity. Embeddedness. How embedded are you to the current contact center platform? Do you know their uh, protocols? Do you know how to integrate with them? Design of the audio-visual interface. You can combine visuals, adaptive cards, uh, voice, text, image in so many different ways. Do you know the best practices? And fallback management. This, this is a magical word, guys, because this is also one of the questions at the head of their minds. Do you know how to manage fallback? What if the system doesn't understand? Do you have man-machine collaboration? How do you do supervised learning? How do you cater for that? How do you route an agent? How do you do that You know, in different occasions? Do you run a rule? So we give some ideas about how we know, how much we know how to manage the fallback and how we utilize it to enhance our models. Design of the channel authentication, you wanna use voice biometrics or OTP or something else. And plus, uh, extended intelligence. Do you want us to use third-party AI tools like image processing to enhance your experience? This is really key. So once you highlight all these points, then you will see a customer which is ready to work with you guys. Trust me. But uh, you should also go through this list. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me and just follow me in one of my sales activity once we do it together. And then you will have a clear idea about how we can utilize all these arguments. Okay, so um, yeah, a lot of cost savings, I have to say. I think uh, you can have access to this presentation. Uh, there are so many ways of uh, proving the return on investment or just uh, showcasing uh, how the system, how the customer can save. It's very simple. You're automating. There's a portion. There's a percentage. They can just do their own calculation. I can tell you only one. One of my customers, they used to have eight agents uh, serving uh, on the live chat. Now they have three times more interaction, but almost 90% of it is being done by the chatbot and their return investment is less than one year. So this is TAB, one of our success stories, 5% increase in the IVR completion rates and you know almost uh, a quarter of a million dollars operational cost savings. Exactly. This is a I'm great a, example, guys. Yeah, it's, I, also, known as, no, no, it's yeah. also known as BNP Paribas in the world. So maybe it's worth yeah. mentioning. It's the BNP Paribas yes, exactly. joint venture. Okay. Thank, thank you, Anil, for the comment. This is, yes, BNP Paribas, and they have a huge savings uh, coming through the uh, conversation live here. This one is, uh, I think it's a global case study, guys. These guys had 2.5 million applications submitted during the pandemic era using this uh, virtual assistant. They have paid millions just to the advertisement of this. They, you, they use celebrities. And uh, you can always highlight this uh, case study to your customers. It's really, really very strong and very useful. And this is another like uh, big, it's like, uh, you know, it's like Amazon in Turkey. Uh, this is also a big uh, project and a lot of savings around. And I'm just going to skip uh, because you can always go through our data sheets. So these are some of our partnerships globally. So uh, 
having partnership with those big uh, giants of the giant players of the uh, you know uh, contact center market gives us a big edge because familiarity familiarity with these environments is also a big advantage second these are our channels which makes you also their channels because uh, once we receive any requirement from any of these partners based on the you know fitness of the partner or the relatedness of the partner you're always uh, willing to work with you guys uh, for the delivery as well as uh, the contracting part of it and some of our references here and let me stop so i'm already exceeding my time so it was a bit quick uh, i hope i was not too quick sometimes i'm being criticized for that so if you have any questions i'm more than happy to uh, answer guys you can always forward them to me through the chat um, panel and i'm now handing over to anil maybe we can collect the questions and then come back to them later on thank you ahmed that thank was you, very anil. informative yes okay all right so i think that was quite a journey uh, what you heard with ahmed so what i'm gonna try to do here is you know talk about our solution uh, show you the topology because this part is the pre-sales part, right? A little bit technical. So um, not too technical. We are going to take a look at how to prepare hardware, software for any conversational AI projects. Okay. And uh, let me start by talking about this little illustration because you know what they say? If you want someone to, uh, if you want to teach someone something, you have to say it three times, at least three times. So Ahmed already uh, said it once, I'm going to say it twice here. And then after this one, I'm going to open up uh, the real topology, the real architecture of the system solution. So I think it will be the third uh, third time you will be hearing this. Okay. Now, this little slide here is extremely important because when you go to a customer, the customer might be asking for a chatbot, a virtual assistant, and a speech-enabled IVR. It doesn't really matter for SAS tech, okay? Uh, because these are just the channels that we are actually enabling, uh, either speech or text-based conversational AI. So those channels, like Ahmed was showing earlier, it could be the WhatsApp channel, it could be the IVR, or it can be a chatbot. But what we did is we developed something called Orchestrator. This Orchestrator, we developed it, I think, three and a half years ago, maybe four years ago. And I don't want to name any competition here, but some of our competitors launched their or orchestrator in 2020. So we have been ahead of the game for at least three, four years now, and we got this experience. So this orchestrator, you can think of it as the brains of the whole operation. All the requests coming from the customers are reaching the orchestrator first. The orchestrator understands the channel as well as it understands whether it needs to engage with any speech components, because if it's coming from uh, chat channels, then there is no speech to text or text to speech requirement, but it could be coming from WhatsApp as a voice message. In that case, the orchestrator needs to engage with our speech to text and text to speech. So how does it uh, do that is when the request comes, it can actually access to the services that were installed and deployed. Okay, so text to speech, speech to text, NLP. Now, if I get the intent correctly, my job is easy. How do I get the intent correctly? That is by designing a natural language processing engine, an NLP engine, which can understand different you know, type of uh, natural conversations. And I will show you how we are designing that NLP, okay? Now, let's go back to diagram. Orchestrator gets the requests. So if it's voice-based, it uses speech-to-text to convert it into text, and then it uses NLP to understand the intent. Let's assume the intent is, in Ahmed's example, to learn your balance. Now I understand the intent. Who is going to give me this balance? It's going to be the banking backend system. So I can go back and call as many APIs as possible to get this information, the balance information. It could be including identification and verification APIs, but it could be the simply, uh, you know, balance API as well. And at the end of this conversation, if you want to still speak with a live agent, or in case that the chatbot or the NLP engine is not able to understand your request. So in order not to frustrate the end user, it could connect to a live agent solution. Now, 
the reference, not reference, the partner slide Ahmed showed you had the three big names, Cisco, Avaya, Genesis. We already developed our connectors to live agents for the chat channels to those, you know, uh, big platform names. But we also uh, done projects where the live chat solution is not one of those three, but it's a custom live agent solution. All we had to do is, you know, talk about the integration, understand, and then develop it. Okay, so this is the diagram. And then this little guy here is the actual uh, topology. Okay, so let me put this a little bit closer to the screen. Okay, all right. So I know that it's hard to see. Maybe what I can do is actually uh, get out of the full screen mode and do some zooming in. Now, on the left hand side, just to make life easier for you, I still have my channels. Okay, so these are my end users. And you know, I have the WhatsApp user, Twitter user, Facebook, Telegram, all of those users, as well as a web chat on the website, or it could be an IVR. Okay, doesn't matter for me. All the requests are going first to my orchestrator. Okay, so orchestrator again being in the middle of everything is is managing the whole flow. Okay, before going to orchestrator, maybe it needs to have a stop in identity. What does identity do? It's an API level identification service. It will just uh, issue a token which will be valid for some hours, maybe 24 hours, 48 hours, to the party who actually made the request, right? So get the token. Once you get the token, send your request to the orchestrator. As you can see on the kind of on the right uh, below here, I have my ASR and TTS. The ASR means speech recognition if someone is not aware of this, and TTS is text to speech. Now the orchestrator can send the request to these guys to get them converted either into text or text into speech, right? And of course, there's the license part where it checks, you know, if you have enough licenses. Now, we have a component called Redis, and Redis is almost like a, a caching mechanism, and it's using a Linux-based, uh, you know, Redis cluster. I will talk about this in the hardware specs. It's actually keeping the sessions alive, okay? And here I have the NLU cluster. So this is where I need to understand the intent of the customer, intent of the request, okay? And behind the NLU, we have some AI-based algorithms like text correction. So think about your customers when they say, hey, does it understand if I make a typo? Does it understand if I forget to put a space in between two words or phrases? Yes, the correction cluster is there because it can understand those typos, commonly made typos, and the, the you know uh, maybe a fast typer who forgot to put some space bar. So there is always this uh, ability. And then you know everything that you do, everything, every request that is coming to conversational AI is being you know uh, stored in our database, whether it is a voice request or a text-based request. So all the interactions are uh, are being kept in our database. Right now, our database is Microsoft SQL, okay? And in the future, we are making it a more kind of a, a database agnostic. When we complete our DevOps transformation, this would be either a PostgreSQL or a Microsoft SQL database, okay? Now, how do you see what you did? How how did your conversational AI, how did your chatbot do? You have to have a web page where you can get some reports, some recognition statistics, How? what's the percentage of the people actually uh, getting to a leave menu on our NLP engine, a meaning that it's correctly understood in the first try, okay? All of that is being done on the web machines as well as the NLP design. So we call it our, uh, Dialog Design Studio, and it's this one, okay? So as I said, it has some reporting capability. So you can say that, okay, I created an NLP engine. How many people contacted? It's 30 people in the last 30 days, okay, in the last some days. I don't remember the dates here. It's the last 30 days, right? Uh, they started 72 sessions, and within 72 sessions, there were 136 requests. So this is like a high level, okay? And then you can see the distribution over time. You can have the match statistics, how well your bot is performing, again, 
you know, uh, the leaf match statistics. So we could go into details, but usually in my pre-sales uh, presentations, I don't really go into much detail. That would be a kind of a second meeting, okay? I just say that, hey, there is a reporting tool, but there's more interesting stuff is, you know, how do you design the NLP? So that is number one question that they're asking. And the way that I'm doing it is just showing one example. And that example is usually the most complicated example we have on our demo system, okay? Which is a banking example. Banking means there are many transactions, there are many menus, right? So uh, I could show them uh, anything from money transfer to changing their password on their credit cards, right? And I do still have some small talk because if you are engaging with a customer on a chit chat level, you have to have some small talk. Now, what's the most impressive thing here on this dialogue design is, you know, you can design your dialogue. It doesn't mean just the NLP part where it understands the intent, but actually it's where you're also engaging with the end user via prompts. Prompts are your responses. If it were on IVR, it would be using TTS or pre-recorded announcements. If it were on a chatbot, it would be directly the chat that you enter here. Now, for the same exact transaction, in this case, money transfer, okay, I could customize my response to the end user by different channels, okay? So this response is for IVR channel, this one is for chat, and this one is for the mobile application. Moreover, what I could do here, and what this actually kind of opens up a discussion is I could create a persona of my bot, okay? What I mean by persona is that via the integration that orchestrator can do, if let's say the end user is Ahmed and Ahmed is 70 years old, okay? He is a very old guy. He doesn't, uh, you know, uh, very understand this kind of technology. And, you know, Ahmed can actually prefer a very formal way of communication. And then, you know, Baran on the other line is 18 years old. He wants to interact with his bank with all the, you know, uh, slang terms, okay? Then in that case, I can make this very sincere, a very informal bot. So all of that is being managed through the prompt section, okay? Now, once you do the, you know, dialogue design, the next thing is showing them a demo, right? And showing them a demo is the easy part. You just go onto our ndbot UI sestech.com, Okay, whatever the language you want to select. Right now, there are three languages, but there could be more. I think we had French at one point. So this is automatically connected to a banking bot. Okay, so the example I show them is, you know, sending a money. How do you do that? You just say, you know, send money. So what happens next is there is a disambiguity. You could send money between your own accounts or you could send money to someone else. So in order to remove the ambiguity from this question, okay, or this statement, send money, the bot is asking a question to another person or to your own account. And now you, you can see that there are two question marks here. The reason is because on this prompt, okay, I put two question marks. I can click on it and I can actually, you know, make it three question marks, save it. I don't have to restart anything. Okay, what I could do is I can go back here, refresh the page and just say, send money one more time. Now I see the three question marks. So this is actually a very dummy down example, but it just shows the, the prospective customer that uh, managing the bot and actually changing the flow is extremely easy. It's, you know, a no brainer almost. You could just go in here, change the prompt altogether, okay? And your bot is instantly responding to your new flow, okay? So that's a very important point. Now, let's continue with this. I say to my dad, okay, and I say $1,000. So what it did is, because I didn't give much information, it was very limited. I was like saying, hey, I just want to send money. It needs to ask me, whom do you want to send the money and how much? These are called named entities, okay? And named entity collection is a part of the, our NLP engine, okay? So what I could do is I can on the fly, you know, change the amount to 1,500, okay? So what happened here is my intent is still the same. 
I didn't change my intent. So the demo is effective because my intent didn't change, only the amount changed, right? So it's remembering where I left off, it's just modifying a named entity, which is the amount that I'm doing uh, as a transaction. The second impressive thing here, it already went back to a backend system and learned that I don't have enough balance in my account. So I also showed here that, you know, the, the backend connectivity, right? So let me show you one other example. The same example, but this time, I will say to my dad next week, Monday, now $700. What I did here is instead of going one by one and letting the bot ask me clarification, clarification questions, I gave the whole of the information at one go. Okay. So what this shows is the power of the NLP engine. It could understand as simple as send money, but also it could understand a statement where there are actually three named entities, the amount, the recipient, and also the date. And if you realize the date is next week, Monday, right? Next week, Monday is the 12th. So the NLP actually understands that and it can map it to, the, to a date uh, version, okay? So uh, this is also showing the power of, you know, uh, the level of conversation could be plenty. It could be as easy as sending money, uh, just saying send money, or as complicated as saying the full uh, statement. Okay, my transaction has been completed. And of course, I don't have to repeat this, but I could have done this or, or using my uh, voice on this cha channel, as well as if I uh, call my IVR, the IVR would be also uh, responding in the same manner. Okay, so this was my little demo. Uh, before I go to the hardware specs, I have almost like 10 minutes. I will show you one more thing. I think if you ever do a demo, you should do this because it's very impressive. And it's called Seamless Agent. Some of you already know this in the audience. I see some names, you know, uh, that knows our Seamless Agent technology. If you don't know what this means, it's almost like an intervention to a bot, okay? A human intervention. Well, why did we develop this? kind of uh, technology it's because you know to to save face basically when a company goes live with their bot especially on their website on their mobile application a lot of people will reach out to that bot on the first day maybe first few days maybe a week okay and ask all sorts of questions okay maybe not related necessarily with the business all right so if your bot fails that's the statement I, I use. If your bot fails to answer those irrelevant questions, people will start some rumors saying that, hey, this bot doesn't understand me. It couldn't understand a simple question. Uh, I think it doesn't work. So in order to prevent this, we recommend using a seamless agent technology. So a few people from the contact center agents can sit in front of this screen, okay? And what do they can do is, let me show you very quickly. In the bot, it's a banking bot, right? What if I say pizza? Okay. It couldn't find any related transactions. So your option number one is go with a bot company, okay? And and does who doesn't have a seamless agent? So this is the answer that they are going to get. Now, what I do is I make myself available as an agent, okay? And I repeat the same pizza. Now here. I received it in front of me. Pizza is something related with eating, okay? So maybe they meant what to eat. I press okay, and look at my response here. A much more organized response, a, a better you know, kind of way to responding something irrelevant to my uh, customers, okay? To my business, sorry. Now, did our journey end here? Probably not, why? Because here is a recognition list, this is where you get to see every single request coming to your bot, okay? IVR bot or chat bot. Now, if I say a report, okay, I will get everything in my, in my kind of little uh, bot. And you can see that here, there's the pizza. The first one, okay, it was a no match, right? In the second one, it was actually matching because it was changed by a human agent. And someone who is in the audience who knows what you know AI algorithms, machine learning algorithms needs is a tagged data, okay? Data who someone deliberately tags saying that, hey, this statement here, which is pizza, is related to what to eat. 
Now, in the seamless agent, I've already tagged that data. I use the real human to understand that it's a, it's a, you know, uh, something to, to to do with eating. I already have this one. Now I can go back to my bot and teach it and use this input as my tag data. So that's the beauty of having this kind of technology. Let me put myself on break. Okay. I know I've been talking a lot, but if you have any questions, feel free to type them. And uh, I'm just gonna jump into the next section, which is the hardware part. Okay. All right. So any, uh, any system, conversational uh, AI system, either IVR or chatbot system, needs to have some components. You've seen them on the topology, on the architecture. Now it becomes live here. Now, it all starts with this document, which you could share on the, on the uh, portal, okay? Uh, our partner portal. And then uh, when you open up, there are different tabs. There's a test tab, minimized prod, high available. So you're gonna be using these three because sometimes it's only a test, you know, not many people will use it. So in that case, we dummy it down to three servers or three components, a database server, a Windows-based server, which we install everything on it, okay, because uh, the load is going to be very, very small and the Redis to keep the sessions, right? So this is our test one. In the minimized prod, we get to see that there are different components. We have a database, we have a web application, NLU engine, orchestrator, the Redis, TTS, and ASR, ASR and TTS, okay? Now, why do I have two servers of each? Because this is a production server, okay? In production environment, you need a backup, you need a failover system. That's why it's actually two servers. Actually, I could have handled up to 50 requests, concurrent requests uh, using one server, but because it's a prod, it's not test, it's not SIT, okay? We recommend going with two servers each. Now, if I go to high available sheet, okay, this time you're gonna be seeing the concurrent request number. This is actually, it's actually very easy. On the IVR, if you have 100 ports, you know, it could mean 100 concurrent requests, but it could be less than 100 as well. Probably people who are in the IVR business for a long time will understand that it's not always 100 requests, concurrent requests, even if you have 100 IVR ports, because there will be some differences of people requesting something. Sometimes it will be an announcement playing and the end user is not talking. Sometimes end users are talking and there is no announcement playing. So it's it's a catch kind of, okay? So if you have 100 ports, maybe the concurrent request will be 50, maybe 70. So we could actually look at the statistics okay, up to that point and understand the concurrent request. And then we could just use that number to determine the number of servers, okay? So the same components I showed you on the architecture, starting with a database, a web, an LU, this time the correction module is separate, the orchestrator, connector. What's connector? I think I missed it on the architecture. Connector is where you have social media channels. Okay, so this connector is called bot connector. It could connect to Microsoft Azure bot services for like Facebook and Telegram, anything that bot Azure bot services supports, or it could be connected to a custom API, a Twitter API or WhatsApp API. So these channels are not allowed to reach the orchestrator themselves. Okay, they have to go through a connector first. This is our kind of gateway between these social media channels because these are public cloud, okay? And usually the orchestrator is behind a firewall on the, on the customer premises, right? So what we do is sometimes we place a connector, bot connector right there on the DMZ uh, to communicate with the outside world. So going back to the list, I have the connector as a separate server identity which issues the token if you remember the redis license server tts and asr servers here okay so you could see on this screen the minimum requirements on the hardware and the software so everything is detailed here and then if you go down a little bit okay 
we made it easy for our customers to see the connection ma matrix, okay? Which server needs to access where and through which port, okay? TCP or UDP ports. Okay, everything is good. Now, there are two missing lines here, ASR and TTS. I had prepared them here, extremely easy to digest, okay? ASR, okay. Now, the test that we did was using a Intel Xeon processor E5, now getting very technical, right? The core speed is 2.4, number of cores is eight. Now, this CPU, what it did is each logical core can concurrently recognize three requests, three, okay? So one core, three requests. This is for speech to text. Now, if you have 100 requests, then I think you should be asking for, you know, uh, according to the core, the CPU core number should be uh, calculated accordingly. And the TTS is can be used by the, again, number of ports on the IVR, okay? And then you can see the CPU and RAM numbers here. So we have these documents kind of separated because ASR and TTS could be sold alone, right? It doesn't have to be a conversational AI platform. The customer might be asking for ASR and TTS alone. That's why we didn't include them here. They are actually on a separate spreadsheet. Okay. So I guess that brings me to the end of my presentation, my part. I think I did everything I was intending to do. Any questions, any comments, or anything that we could answer during the session? I think we still have seven or eight minutes. I'm a little kind of uh, sad because all the questions were to Ahmed. Ahmed, I think you impressed them. Yeah, Ahmed answered almost all of them. Instantly. I was just helping you, Anok, because you were speaking at the same time, so I just <laughs> answered them as much as I can. No, no, Actually, I'm there's one question, Anul. I have to answer verbally because it's like about AI and machine learning. So uh, mm -hmm. maybe I can do it right now. So I could yeah. not write it down. It's a long subject. Sure. So it came from Samra Sharif, our uh, dear friend Samra Sharif. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so when it comes to the subject of machine learning and AI, that's also one of the big things everyone will ask about these type of subjects. Your sh first uh, point, first my first point is you should be ready for that. So uh, the first question of Samir is, what is the difference between AI and machine learning in our context? Uh, this is one of the big, like let's say, um, lack of proper perspective about AI comes from the fact that people cannot differentiate machine learning and AI. Actually, machine learning is part of AI, but AI is basically the simulation of human intelligence, right? So as far as you're generating human-like results, outcomes, it means it's AI. So it can be knowledge representation or it can be machine learning. It can be a rule-based thing. As far as you're imitating human intelligence and delivering results, it's AI. But nowadays, uh, machine learning is becoming quite popular for, for, for very different reasons. And there are different ways of incorporating machine learning, but none of them are unclustered um, type of learning. So unclustered, I mean, uh, excuse me, unsupervised, excuse me, unsupervised machine learning. This is a to total myth. So what is uh, unsupervised machine learning? So the imagination of the customers is like, they're gonna give you the data and the system will start speaking without proper tagging, without proper supervision. This is not possible. And I got that confirmation from Gartner because that was a big question. Everyone was asking to me, acting as if, you know, someone else did it. And I was feeling whether we are missing, skipping something. There is no such implementation no one knows that if anyone has seen anything that works actually you can use uh, you know clustering algorithms in different ways but in the context of dialogue it really doesn't work so how can we use machine learning in two ways in our context for example when you start working with the customers let's say they have conversation logs which means for example if the project is a chatbot project they should have Web chat dialogues, basically. I mean, input, output, input, output. And through that type of a database, you can basically do a certain degree of mapping. What are you mapping? You're mapping the inputs with the outputs. You are doing a mapping of inputs and outputs, and the system can give you a scaffolding of the dialogue. But it is just a scaffolding. You can never rely on actual data for building a dialogue. You can rely on it 
from a, from, from a like an uh, let's say it can work as an aid for you to finalize something, but you should always make a finishing on top of this. Why? Uh, I, I mean, there is one uh, big, large, very, very large company. Let me not name that. Uh, they have tried something like uh, really uh, almost like unsupervised machine learning, and it turned out to be a big scandalous cancellation of the project. So you can never rely on your agent's, uh, you know, experience uh, on that day, which he had a big fight with uh, his wife at home, and use the same terminology with your customers. Uh, so this is very risky, and uh, th there's no applicable example of that. We have never seen it. So again, how we use machine learning, you can use it for helping you to build your final dialogue uh, system using the, the outputs of the machine learning, because you say, okay, this word is mapping with this, but this is just the probability. So you can use that information or you can change it based on your final human judgment. That's one way. The second way is once you launch, uh, when the customer makes an expression or just enters some type of data and it's not finding any match in your system, you can label it and that labeling can help you incorporate it into your system. And actually Seamless Agent is a very brilliant tool that helps you to generate labels on the go. What do I mean by on the go? For example, the customer said, I want to learn my final goal. So I'm trying to find something really weird because uh, this is my standard ex uh, you know, s example. Some of you might have heard about that. I think, that, let's say the guy tries to say uh, latest uh, transactions, but he says final goal because he has the broken English. Uh, Excuse me. So, uh, and uh, when you say final goal, the system will not find a match, right? So the, the match itself uh, is not part of the model. Using seamless agent, you can say, okay, final goal might mean latest transaction. So when you supervise that, that piece of information, when you uh, label it as latest transaction, what happens? There's an input and there's an output. There's a label. Now, now you can map uh, each e these two, uh, you know, using machine learning. And then you can uh, use it as part of your model. But without supervision, just relying on bare data and like imagining to have something perfect out of that is not working. And this is not something that we, we ever commit to do because in the, uh, the outcome will not be good and then the customer will not be happy. So again, just to summarize, in the beginning of the projects, you can, if the customer has conversation logs, then you can utilize and you can do so certain scaffolding of your uh, uh, dialogue tree so that uh, the process becomes much faster. And after you launch, you can use uh, the data which does not fit into any of the intents and label them to enhance your model. This is the two ways. But I'll give you a trick, guys. When someone opens a discussion about machine learning, I tell them, look, for speech to text, we are using deep neural networks. For speech to text, with text to speech, we are again using neural TTS because now we have the neural TTS. The old one was more like concatenative type of more rule-based type of TTS. This one is neural uh, networks based. And we are using neural networks not only for bringing together the pieces of voice, but also for, for example, um, uh, for Arabic at least, uh, the, 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 the harake, and the vowels are missing in uh, Arabic scripts. We're also using machine learning for different purposes as well. And when it comes to um, NLP, we are using machine learning for scaffolding as well as supervised learning after go live typically for enhancing the models. And when you give these type of examples, then the machine learning talk stops at that point in time. And I'm typically showing an example of seamless agent uh, in which they can really visualize how the supervision happens on the go and how it is helpful both for saving the moment as well as helping the system enhance itself. One more, one more uh, tip guys. Um, I'm always showing also um, some examples of different types of ex extended AI components like, like image processing, OCR, sentiment analysis. I have demos for each of those. And I'm also trying to give the impression to the customer that like the subject of AI is broader than conversational domain. So if you want to create a wow effect or if you want to differentiate, for example, one of our customers in KSA now, uh, the core reason why we differentiated was using uh, utilizing image processing in our demo. That's it. So that was the, 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 the point that we captured the customer's attention. But actually, we are not an image processing company. I was only trying to show them our capability for integrating with third party 
AI extensions. So this is also completing that type of narrative and it can really help you as well. Uh, if you want to convince the smart guys and the customer, which will, you know, bombard you with uh, AI related questions. So great points. Thank you, everybody. And we have Tarek to say hi and uh, we can uh, sum up this session. Perfect session. Thank you. Tarek, you want to say something? Will you introduce Tarek Baran or shall I do it? <laughs> okay, maybe. You go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Tarek is our uh, head of partner enablement. So uh, he's in the office now. Yes. And uh, Tarek is your guy, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, as our partners, he will help you be, be uh, tuned with Sestek, enabled, technically as well as you know from a sales and process perspective he organized this event and if you need any such content just let us let him know so that he coordinates if there is anything missing you need like a documentation xyz he will be supporting you Tarek, uh, the floor is yours please yeah uh, actually uh, we, we we came to the end of uh, this webinar but uh, it, it's very elating actually to see everybody here uh, it was difficult to you know, arrange this, gather all the partners, because it's gonna be a very long series of webinars. It's not going to be only for conversational AI, for sales and pre-sales. We will have uh, a long series of webinars for uh, conversational analytics, for conversational uh, biometrics as well. We are very eager to uh, train our partners in an excellent way to bring them to an excellent level uh from sales pre-sales and ps delivery uh perspectives uh we are strong and we want you all to be uh, as strong as us so thank you very much for your attendance thank you much thank you very much for your uh interest as well uh, uh and and see you in the next uh, in the next webinar thank you all have a good day bye-bye yeah Bye-bye, guys. Thank you. All right.